Now when I say red, y'all say claws. Red claws, red claws. When I say red, y'all say claws. Red claws, red claws. We on the main stage, we on the same page. We getting buckets, baby. Put it on the replay. Hey, hey, put it on the replay. Hey, hey, put it on the replay. Now when I say red, y'all say claws. Red claws, red claws. When I say red, y'all say claws. Red claws. Well, Evan, season 10 off and running here for the main Red Claws at the Portland Expo, and it has been exciting so far. It certainly has, and you start with the play of the Celtics two-way players. Uh, Walt Lemon Jr. has been outstanding offensively, uh, near triple-double in one of the first games for the Red Claws, and P.J. Dozier right there dropping double-doubles every single time he hits the floor. And the Red Claws have also had a lot of help from the Boston Celtics as well. Robert Williams. Brad Wanamaker and Gershon Yabuselli have all spent some time already down here. Yeah, in fact, all three of those guys suited up in the same game in November for the Red Claws, and this just shows the growth of the G League now. It was the first time in Red Claws history that all of the starting five were under contract by the Celtics. And of course, as we've uh, talked about before too, season two for Brandon Bailey, certainly starting to really insert himself as a strong head coach in this league. Yeah, no doubt about it. You can tell that Coach Bailey is a lot more relaxed this year, a lot more interactive with the players, and it's really paying dividends at this point. This league has certainly seen many alums go up there and make a difference in the NBA, including the Celtics' own Terry Rozier. Yeah, there's no doubt the purpose of the G League is to get those players on the end of the NBA bench some playing time, some minutes they might not get in the NBA so that they can succeed at the next level. Probably on the current uh, Celtics roster, the Red Claws success story uh, is Terry Rozier, uh, a guy who his rookie year gets drafted in the first round, uh, gets some significant playing time with the Red Claws, now he's turning into a star in the NBA. Yeah, 20 games or so um, towards the end of that rookie season. Um, I don't remember what exactly it was, but it felt like he was there for quite a bit of time. Um, we were very deep at the guard spot when we drafted him. Uh, but then we needed him at the end of the year as we went into injuries his rookie year. And then in the playoffs, we had even more, and he played a lot. Um, you know, it's funny, there is always a silver lining, even when you get beat in a playoff series. And for him to get that experience against Atlanta was a huge boost heading into the next year. And then obviously his third year, um, he went to an even different level after more injuries to our team, specifically to Kyrie, opened up even more minutes for him. Uh, he's a guy that plays the right way, he's tough, he's competitive, he's athletic. And, you know, I think that, you know, you talk about how in invaluable the G League experience is for all these guys that end up playing up there. But um, for Terry, he looks at it as an opportunity to grow and get better, as he should. Um, and he took great advantage of it and is in a good place. He is the head coach of the Maine Red Claws, Brandon Bailey, back for a second season here in Maine. Welcome back, Coach. Thank you. Uh, tell us about your summer. How did that go? What did you do this summer with the Celtics? Uh, it was good. I um, was involved with the draft, um, some playoff prep things, uh, post-game prep, um, stuff like that. I uh, was heavily involved in the summer league. Um, a lot of our players actually but with the Red Claws were um, involved in August workouts, September workouts, things like that. So um, it was great. It was a great experience. Always good to be around those guys, Coach Stevens, the rest of the coaching staff, all the players and be around. Um, that group is really, really special. So, Coach, now that you have a year under your belt, has your approach changed this season as we go into your second season with the Red Claws? Yeah, it's a little, I mean, obviously, you know, having a year under your belt, more experience, having an understanding of what to expect, um, you know, when coming up here to Maine, what to expect in the G League, um, you know, more comfortable, uh, you know, coaching in games or in practices, you know, just having that year under your belt. Uh, I'm not a pro by, you know, any stretch of imagination, but, you know, just having that year experience is, is great heading into this season. How often are you talking to Coach Stevens and the Celtics staff during the Red Claw season? Um, pretty frequently. I would try to, I try to communicate um, via email at least once a week um, on the phone with those guys through text message throughout the week as well. Just let them know what's going on with us, how things are going, um, you know, see if there's anything that they'd like us to do differently or 
um, anything like that, but specifically, you know, like just communicate to them like how our two-way players are playing or any assignees are coming as well. We like to stay in contact with that stuff. Speaking of those two-way players, this year we have P.J. Dozier and Walt Lemon. Those are the two guys with the Celtics slash Red Claws two-way contracts. Tell us about those players. What can we expect from them? Yeah, we're really excited about both guys. Um, we have great, ex not great experience, but we have experience with Walt Lemon from last year. Uh, he played very, very well against us. Be I great remember. To yeah, it'll be great to have, uh, you know, on our side this year. Um, really dynamic offensive player, um, super athlete, NBA athlete already. Um, need to work on a few things defensively, um, but he's, he's going to be great for us and the Celtics. Um, same thing with, with PJ, more of a defensive minded uh, guard, can handle the ball as well. Bigger guard, about 6'6, six, 6'7. Six, six, um, very defensive minded oriented guy. Um, great to have in the locker room, great work ethic, both guys. Um, so, really happy to have those guys be a part of our organization here and with the Celtics. Well, good luck the rest of the way. Yeah, thank Coach you. Brandon Bailey and the Red Claws. Thank you. Well, you've torn up this building before. What is it about this building that makes you shoot so well? Uh, no, it was just, it's nothing to do with the building, man. It was just one of them days for me. That's all. Yeah. Take us back to what it was like uh, getting that call from the Celtics and, and signing with them. How did that feel? Oh, I can't even describe it, man. It's uh, something I've been really working really hard for, and uh, I'm just grateful for that. You know, Boston gave me the opportunity. And you think about this organization right now with the Celtics and, and the future they have, and it seems pretty bright, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. The pieces they got, you know, with Tatum, Brown, you know, the young guys, and you got Rosier. It's, 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 it's a talented group, man. You know, you just got to figure out how to put it together. But all in all, you got Kyrie back, Gordon coming back. So it's, uh, I'm looking forward to the season. You've had an opportunity, uh, as we talked about, to, to play in this league. What have you taken away from your time so far in the G League? Um, just, you know, just controlling what you can control. You know, I mean, it's going to be stuff that frustrate a lot of players. And, um, you know, you just can't can't let that get to you. You just got to, you know, keep keep a keep your head level and just keep uh, just keep working hard, man. That's what I that's the main thing I learned. Just keep uh, control of what you control and just working hard. What have you been working on since the the end of last year coming into this year? A little bit of everything, you know. I mean, my main focus is being more of a leader, you mm -hmm. know, because at first I didn't really like to talk too much, and you know now that I'm, um, I have a leadership characteristic, so you know guys tend to follow me. So I gotta, I gotta take pride in more in that role, being a leader, and really just as far as basketball aspect, or really everything. There's nothing you can, nobody's created anything, so I can get better at every part of it, whether it's knowing when to drive to the basket, knowing when to get my guys going, and just knowing when to take certain shots. So. Excited to uh, get things rolling here and uh, in in front of all these main fans that, like we said, they've seen you play here before. It must be nice to be able to have them cheering for you this time, though, huh? Yeah, I mean, honestly, just I've, I've been in the G League twice already, and, mm -hmm. and I've never seen a fan base like this that comes to every game, and, and it's just strong. It's like, I was like, man, like I remember, I remember last year we played, I think it was on the Sunday game. You know, Sunday games in G League might be like four, 400 people coming. <laughs> Man, this thing was packed, and you know, I ain't never seen nothing like it. So I'm looking forward to, you know, experiencing that on a on a regular basis. Thanks, Paul. We wish you the best this year, man. Thank you, man. All Appreciate right. it. Coming up, looking back on 10 seasons of Red Claws basketball. There have been two teams, two minor league basketball teams in Maine that failed. You know, so that was the backdrop of what we were doing. We catch up with the original Red Claw, Billy Thomas. There's not a lot of guys get to be chosen in the first player. And getting in the holiday spirit at the Expo. Just being together, you know, no matter what's going on with family. But first, who is the Red Claw's record holder for all time games played? Is it A, Mario West, B, Omari Johnson, C, Chris Wright, or D, ADT? Red Claws fans, bring your group out to a game this season. New for 2018, for groups of 15 or more, every ticket purchased receives a free Red Claws hat. Call 210-6655 or visit MainRedClaws.com for more information. A smile, such a simple gesture, an effortless contraction of muscles, a flash of teeth. Healthy smiles have the power to spread joy, courage, and love. When you smile, it transforms you and the world around you. So if you feel the urge, go ahead and use that simple gesture to spread joy. Keep your smile healthy and strong. Choose Delta Dental, protecting more smiles than anyone.
New Gen Hospitality Management, the official hotel partner of your main red claws. Our hotels are the perfect fit for families, corporate travel, and anyone looking for a clean and comfortable stay. With indoor pools, fitness rooms, conference spaces, and on-site restaurants, New Gen Hospitality is just right for your main getaway or group travel. Make your game day experience a slam dunk with our special red claws hotel rate. Visit NGHMLLC.com for our hotels and information. I look at it as though every house is mine and my family's in it. There's a lot of responsibility with it, but I'd want the same if it was somebody coming to my house. You know, it's important. You know, I believe, I believe in the product. Who is the Red Claws record holder for all-time games played? B, Omari Johnson, 99 games over two seasons. The genesis of the Red Claws is a meeting uh, between John and I at a coffee shop in South Portland. You know, that was it, and then he told me what he was thinking about, and uh, and so that was, uh, that was interesting, right, because it was, there had been two teams, two minor league basketball teams in Maine that failed, you know, so that was the backdrop of what we were doing. It was also 2008 by the time we put it together, so the worst economic recession, worst economic crisis, right, since probably uh, the Great Depression, you know, could be off by that, but that's what a lot of people were saying then. So we're trying to start a new business in a really rough economic climate where two prior businesses that were very similar had failed. So I think there was a lot of people that said like, yeah, what are these guys like a little bit off, you know, in terms of their thinking. Um, but we were confident. I mean, I think that the thing that was uh, the most instructive for us as we were thinking through it was the two prior failures. You know, they, I mean, I think it was good people that did it and all that stuff and did a good job, but they didn't have three very important letters, which is MBA. But when you, you have that, uh, you know, people I think understand that this isn't, um, you know, maybe kind of minor league, you know, it's not, uh, it's not the same way that they, they would think uh, of uh, kind of independent, you know, leagues. He is the first ever Maine Red Claw, Billy Thomas. He's back in Maine. First of all, welcome back. Thanks for having me back, man. Uh, brings back a lot of old memories and uh, just the buzz in the gym right now makes me uh, think about trying to suit up again. <laughs> so you were that first signed player. We got the press conference, the pictures where you're holding up the, the Maine jersey. What, what do you remember about being the first player in that first year with the Red Claw? Honestly, um, you know, being chosen as the first player, it, it meant a great deal to me. Uh, it was one of the, the, the high marks in my career. Not a lot of guys get to be chosen the first player in a lot of franchise, you know, in a franchise. And for me to be able to be the first guy chosen to, to, to help get the franchise started and to see that 10 years later, it's going as strong as ever, a uh, special feeling for me. We talked to Coach Austin Ainge uh, earlier uh, this season, and he mentioned that he was a, a lot younger than you that first season. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, me being kind of the oldest guy on the last two, you know, one or two teams that I played on uh, really spurned my thoughts about becoming a coach because uh, I found myself being uh, the elder statesman on, on the teams. And so I would be a, an extension of the coach, even though I didn't play the point guard position, which is an extension of the coach. But I found myself directing and leading and doing all that stuff, and which, you know, had led me the natural transition for me was to become a coach. And that's what you're doing now. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, starting my ninth year of coaching at a private school in Kansas City. Uh, we've had some really good teams come through. We've had uh, five players play Division I basketball. We've played for three state championships, uh, winning one. Um, so the program uh, is thriving. We've got a, a young bunch returning this year, but I think we'll compete and uh, let the chips fall where they may. Can you believe it's been 10 seasons since you suited up for the Red Claws? Absolutely not. Looking at me and looking at the pictures that I took uh, 10 years ago, I can believe Haven't it. Haven't aged a bit, man. Come on. <laughs> Billy Thomas, we Thank appreciate you. you joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Nick King, number five, small forward, Middle Tennessee State University. So, uh, what do you like to do off the court? NBA 2K, 
my part. So if anybody want to add me, they can add me. Um, <laughs> but um, other than that, I like to shoot pool. You know, I like to shoot oh, nice, pool. Nice. Yeah, I'm a very good pool player. I taught myself how to play. When did you learn to play? Um, once I transferred to Alabama, you know, the, the sit out year is kind of tough. So I was in the gym most of the time and in the gym, it was a pool table in the lobby. Mm -hmm. So every time they were on the road or, you know, they played a game, I just found myself playing pool. And I'm a competitive person. So once I started playing, I wanted to get good at it. So I just kept on playing and playing. Who's your team in uh, NBA 2K? And I play with the Celtics, the Jazz. Mm -hmm. um, I done played with the Raptors before. I can play with Portland. Is there a uh, pregame meal you like the most? I don't know, usually I just eat the peanut butter jam, peanut butter jelly sandwich that's already there. <laughs> I, they fill you up, they have you ready with a lot of protein, so I just eat them. What's the last concert you went to? The last concert, it was actually in Boston. I went to the Drake and Migos concert. Oh, nice. I'm, a, I'm a real big Drake fan, so mm -hmm. that concert was epic. They, they did that thing, the Migos and Drake. But you know, Drake, all time favorite artist. I think he's the best to ever do it, you know, that's in my opinion. You know, on both scenes, on the R&B and the rap scene, so. Yeah, I'm definitely, he's definitely in my top. What part of your game are you working on this year? A part of my game that I can think better me on the court is my my physical presence. You know, I want to always be in the best shape possible. I always want to, you know, keep my body right, you know, keep the things off the court right. So on the court, I can be, you know, multiple, I can be in multiple positions, can do multiple things, can play, play outside, play inside, guard outside, guard inside. But you know, that comes with you got to be in shape. So, you know, I'm in the weight room every single day. I'm running extra after practice. I'm running before practice, taking care of my body, stretching and doing all the little things. Well, we wish you the best of luck this thank year, you, man. Thank you, thank you. welcome to Maine. Thank you, glad all to right. be here. I enjoy all Christmases. It's definitely my favorite holiday of the year. I just love the, the unity that the world shows. You know, it's a little tougher with us being, you know, a little older now and half the time we're not even home for Christmas. But when we are all together, uh, you know, we still open presents, obviously. We still get each other gifts. Just being together, you know, no matter what's going on with family, no matter, you know, how things are going, when it's Christmas time, you know, everybody's together, you know, watching basketball games on TV, eating, you know, I especially love getting together with my family and um, you know there are some holiday albums that I do not crack out until I'm in my house. Eat, sleep, get up, eat again, sleep, eat again. Uh, but now you know it's kind of like you kind of just wake up whenever. You don't really, you know by the time everybody's up it's now two o'clock. But uh, we, we always like to sing, um, be it a Christmas carol or you know just a regular church song that, or one of our songs that we've written. Um, that's something that we always like to do, regardless of where we are. Every Christmas is wake up, wait for the NBA games to start and watch it all day. So I, I think we talked about last time, Glad It's Night in the Pips. I don't have one Christmas song, but I do have a favorite Christmas album, and that's Glad It's Night in the Pips Christmas album. Like, I listen to all these other songs, Boys to Men, Let It Snow, Mariah Carey. I can listen to them on the flight home, but as soon as I step in the house, Glad It's Night is playing, and that's just what brings back all the the love and the Christmases and the flood of emotions and memories of throughout the, all the years of Christmas. Still ahead, more on 10 seasons of Red Claws basketball. The launching a name, the launching an icon and crusher. Claws in the community, helping raise money for the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southern Maine. A little bit of dinner, player introductions, just a great evening out for the kids. And more holiday memories from the Red Claws. Shake my sister, uh, wake my parents up every year. But first, who holds the Red Claws record for made three-pointers in a game? Is it A, Sheldon Mack, B, James Young, C, Chris Babb, or D, Trey Davis? Join us for a New Year's Eve tradition. Our annual December 31st matinee tips off at 1 p.m. at the Expo, featuring a halftime performance by the Superstars. 210-6655 or MainRedClaws.com for tickets. They're going fast. The Main Red Claws are all about scoring high. While the court's a great place to practice your three-point shots, the concession stand is a great place to practice reducing your trash. And the three R's are your best tool for reducing waste anywhere consumption strikes. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Practice your three R's by downloading the EcoMain Recyclopedia app today. Because when you score high by being a wicked smart recycler, we all win. 
A smile, such a simple gesture, an effortless contraction of muscles, a flash of teeth. Healthy smiles have the power to spread joy, courage, and love. When you smile, it transforms you and the world around you. So if you feel the urge, go ahead and use that simple gesture to spread joy. Keep your smile healthy and strong. Choose Delta Dental for your individual or family plan, protecting more smiles than anyone. Kick the oil habit this year with biodiesel from Maine Standard Biofuels. Made from locally recycled cooking oil in our Portland plant, biodiesel is better for the environment, competitively priced, and ready to use without modification to your home furnace, diesel vehicle, or duck boat. To purchase biodiesel for your home heating or diesel vehicle needs, call us at 207-878-3001 or visit our website at mainstandardbiofuels.com. Who holds the Red Claws record for made three-pointers in a game? D, Trey Davis. Ten made three-pointers in his 57-point performance last season. So the first six months of the team's establishment, it was a lot of fun because you go from just being NBA D-League main to launching a name, launching an icon and crusher, having a dance team be in place and really see a brand come to life in the community. And one of the things with my background being in event marketing that I would share with the cast back at that time, the people that worked in the organization was the fact that as much as we're planning to be on point for game one, the biggest marketing piece that we will ever have is once people leave the arena itself. And so that night when we came in and we packed people in the house, as Bill had mentioned, the marketing truly began the day after. And we just wanted to strive to be our best in that first game. And lucky enough for us, we won the first game. We packed 3,000 people in the house and they had a phenomenal time. Memic is Maine's leading workers' compensation insurance company. So we provide uh, workers' compensation insurance to about 18,000 employers here in Maine, and they're estimated 220,000 employees. Uh, that's most of the state, as you might guess. We've done that for the last 25 years. We've been in business since 1993. Uh, we came into existence out of a, a reform of workers' compensation law in the state of Maine. For those who don't know, workers' comp is required uh, for employers uh, to ensure most of their employees against injuries that happen at work. We've been involved with the Red Claws since their inception. At the very beginning, it was important to us because this is our home, this is our community, and uh, supporting something that was uh, so important and, and vital uh, here in Portland was something we wanted to do. But over time, we've found that it, uh, it provides great benefit in terms of uh, a place for us to entertain insurance agents and people, for us to uh, have small employee gatherings, uh, the social nature of that, uh, and it's always nice to be able to support something that's important in our community that also spurs economic growth. I get really excited about just the community aspect, honestly. I mean, when you go to a game, uh, you see neighbors, friends, business associates, people we do business with, you see parts of the whole community there. We've been involved every year since the beginning, and our involvement has only grown over the years. So we're here at the Kiss and Claws Welcome Back Dinner. We're excited to be able to associate with them, with them and have some fun with them today. This is awesome because I can remember being in these kids' positions. I can remember being a 10, 11 year old and coming to see uh, guys who were professional, guys who were high school stars and college stars and being able to interact with them is great. I remember I was in second grade and I had a camp at uh, Mark Price. Mark Price was the Cleveland Cavaliers, a sharpshooter and he uh, hung out with me and shot around with me and that's a moment I'll never forget. That's the thing that, you know, us as basketball players, we don't even think how much we're impacting these kids' lives by just playing one-on-one -on -one or letting them uh, shoot on us or whatever, so it's fun. It's all about, just like it says, kids and claws. It's about kids, not only from Boys and Girls Clubs, but from the greater Southern Maine community, getting a chance to interact with the players on the court. A little bit of dinner, player introductions, just a great evening out for the kids. I think this has been an amazing partnership over 10 years because it's so robust on so many levels with players interacting with the kids at our Boys and Girls Clubs, kids going to the Red Claws basketball camp. Typically, each year, there's a few players out here that may have been a member of a Boys and Girls Club in another community somewhere. We're very proud if you walked in our Portland clubhouse, you'd see the Red Claws logo right on our gym floor. I never turned down because 
I'm 30 years old now, and that was when I was, that, that was 20 years ago when Mark Price did that for me, and it was 20 years now that I remember everything he said, everything he did, so it matters. So this is what the Red Cross organization has been doing for years, and it's great that our faces in the community and um, we're able to go to grocery store and interact with people like that, and they know us, and we have a good reputation in the community. It's all about fun, man. It's all about fun. They, they revive the kid that's in me. You know, they revive the kid that's in me, and you know, you, age is just a number. You know, being able to interact with them and, and have them remind them what this game is all about. Um, I remember it was one Christmas, um, me and my little brother, we were so anxious to get up. We actually opened up every single gift, you know, before my parents got downstairs. Not from when I was a little kid, probably like in high school though, my brother surprised me with the Concords, the Jordans. Ooh, that's nice. So yeah, that was nice. My dad uh, hit the drums on Christmas night. Like it wasn't around the Christmas tree or whatever. I was being real spoiled and uh, didn't get the drums like I wanted. But I didn't know it was downstairs. They told me to go downstairs and they were, they were set up. It, we, we paid the price, but you know, it was still Christmas, so they couldn't get mad. But you no, know, we were so, so anxious. You know, we knew where, we knew the, where the gifts were hid. My parents bought me a um, Fisher Price rim. And, uh, and I think that's when it all really started. So that, I think that was my favorite Christmas gift. I think it, uh, I kept it till I was about 13. Yeah, I actually just watched the old uh, VHS tape when I was at home before I came out here, and it was uh, me and my brother uh, getting our Nintendo 64 back when I was three years old, and I was just mashing buttons at the time, but uh, I've, I still have the uh, the game, and I could, I'd say I'm a, a virtuoso at it at this point. That's my thing. I wake up early, and I wake up everybody in the house every, every time. Like, I'm 30 years old now, and I still do it. I'll get up around. 6.37 and I'll go shake my sister, uh, wake my parents up every year, every year. That's when I really started to actually start liking basketball a lot. And I used to actually used to really work, like practice my game on the Fisher Price rim in the room. So that was my definitely my most memorable present. I've had it for 18 years now and it's still working. It's got uh, all types of change in there from when my little sister would just put coins in there like it was a piggy bank. Uh, but it still works, so yeah, I loved it. When I first got my basketball goal outside, uh, you know, I was like four, and I woke up and, you know, my parents were like, yeah, come check outside. And I knew it wasn't a car or anything, you know what I'm saying? So went outside and it was a basketball goal and I was out there all day. You know, it was cold as I don't know what, but I was out there. They know it's coming, but they act like they don't like it, but I know deep down inside they like it. They act like, oh, go away, but I know they love it. They come downstairs at like 9 and 10. We already downstairs playing with the toys and all that. So, you know, that's one thing I always remember. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> season 10 is shaping up to be our best season yet. With exciting promotions and great basketball, you won't want to miss any of the action at the Expo. Thanks for being a part of Crustacean Nation. Go Red Claws.